Thank you so much once again for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and you are watching the Power Talk Show. We have been having a conversation with Kennedy Otieno and Ian Scott on the some of the challenges that we face on our path to success, particularly for the millennials and the Gen Z. Kumekwana some things that we are not as successful as the previous generations. And I want to hear from you as we progress with this conversation. Go on our platforms at Y254. Tuambie, do you think it's harder for the millennials and the Gen Z to make it in life? Has it become more difficult given the economic uh, times, the political scene and the unrest that's going on globally? Has it become harder for the millennials and the Gen Z to make it in life and before we even get to the the economic uh, state and the political scene because there's so much that influenced it to Kianzia from let's even go back to 2007 there was the political unrest things stabilized then there was 2013 there was a bit of unrest took a stabilized Tana 2020 COVID came in and then right now there's still so, so much globally not just in Kenya alone there is so much that makes the economy be a bit shaky when we were on break, we were talking about financial literacy. It is something that is not common. I don't know if in the past, maybe our fathers, our grandparents were being taught about financial literacy. Because the only time I remember coming across anything to do with finances or business was in business in, uni in high school. And it was an elective. I could quite a compulsory course for every single person to do. Uh, Ken, you're an accountant. I'm sure you've interacted with so many people, clients who are not even familiar about that. Why do you think financial literacy is still a major hindrance to us? Uh, just they have mentioned, the clients I've met, most of them uh, have no clue with financial literacy. But they're, they're big people who kind of... Uh, drive the economy. 80%, because if I, you have some, someone just started a cleaning company, and he has contract with these big malls, and you ask yourself, how, 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 are, you, how are you making it to this uh, cleaning services company? And uh, you will find most of them were just small employees. He was just an employee to a particular company. And uh, just seeing how th things were being done. And you'll find most, 90% of people who open company, you'll find he was an employee in a, either hardware or in a, a particular company. And he saw how things are, were being done. Then moving out, he starts his or her own company. You ask yourself, how, uh, how did you make it to this? Then... Uh, They even don't even give you the exact answer. How with terms of financial literacy, because he doesn't. That's why he has to need. He has to get someone who look for his book. Who need who need to get uh, like an admin or a clerk. So financial literacy, just to 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 say, as much as it is very very important in in uh, in one's business or one's company, many people lack it. Many people lack it, and I may not say so that it's a, a, a major interest to someone's success. No. Nowadays, lawyers have their own firm, and they generate more money in their own firm. Doctors have their own clinic, and you'll find even they have uh, other businesses. They buy land, they sell. They have rental, they have built rental where they earn other. So how, how, how do they know these things without being taught that? Uh, uh, you, need to, you, need to, you need to understand how finance works. Mm -hmm. Definitely, uh, as much as you are, you are doing this, but still at the back of your mind, you say, I need someone who can keep my book, someone who? So not only keeping the book, even me, if you, if you ask me, how many businesses do you <coughs> have, how many investments have you done, as much as you have done the account, you'll find a uh, few of us who are accountant or finance uh, specialists, few have 
investments. Ili unaweza sema ati ame invest kwa hii. No as much as they advise people how to invest and make money. Them they do not most of them do not invest. Then you wonder how it is beyond human understanding. Those who <laughs> is it ignorance <laughs> ama ni nini? Unajua tuko na tuko na tabia ya kupuuzia kitu unless it affects us directly. Maybe. If I don't feel the impact, <laughs> I won't focus on it. And most people even started diversifying in 2020. When COVID hit, yes, their yes. main source of income was affected. That's when they realized, oh my God, I need to start a business. I need to have a side hustle. I have a kashamba. I can plant and sell these vegetables. We don't realize things up until we get to like a crisis, a yeah. challenge. That's yeah. when we learn. Na kuna hii concept pia, unalan kwa ground. <laughs> you know, unalan senye, una move on. The truth is, even the youth, you ask them about investing, akuna. Siju retirement plan, hana. Life insurance, ata siju yo ni nini. And we are not, you know, we're in this era where we have so much information through the technology, but we are not really utilizing it up until you've opened a business, then you realize I need someone to keep my books. I need someone to keep track of these things. I need someone who understands taxes and all that. So then you bring someone in. But without that, atwendi kujituma. Ian, why do you think to kukwa yu space and you comfortable without financial literacy? Knowing that, because so many people talk about atuna financial literacy. But the number of people who actually go out of their way to study and learn, ni wachache sana. Natukona technology. So why do you think we're still struggling with that? Because we have the information. Even if our systems failed us, we have the information right now on our uh, the devices and everything. But why is it something that we don't really focus on? Um, first things first, uh, I'd like to differ with Ken because when you're in the university, um, take me for example, I'm not in the financial field. I'm not in the financial grand scheme of things. But there are some, those common common units, I'm sure she really know them, those mm. two common common units, microeconomics, entrepreneurship. Mm. Uh, you'd wonder why if you're doing maybe a media related course, why will you have to want, learn microeconomics? Why will you have to learn entrepreneurship? What's, yeah. the, what's the essence of learning, I don't know, demand curve, uh, economies of scale, uh, market, labor, capital, and all that stuff. What's the essence of knowing how to draw up a great business plan? That, that's maybe, that's one tick for the university system in the, in the country. Um, when you're looking at uh, uni students, let me tell you, Cheryl, a uni student will know even where that 10 bob went. Mm. I'll know it, uh, hey, even that 0 0.001, okay. I'll know, I'll know why it's not there. Mm. I'll have to know. There's this, I, I, I feel like we are somehow programmed, like maybe when you're in uni, uh, there's, there are just those random days you'd like, ah, let me just read my messages then. <laughs> let me just look at my expenditure. Quick, 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 quick. But then again, uh, let's call it a double-edged sword of some sort because that is only beneficial to those who have gone to uni. But what about those who have not gone to uni? Maybe you, you were done with high school, then maybe you started working immediately or maybe you were, went for a short course or something of the sort. I feel like this also boils down to civic education because what's the, what's the largest medium that can reach the people? It's not even the media itself, it's the government. If the government pushes it, we will know it. The same way they pushed out NHIF and pushed in Shah, we know it. So we will know it. We'll know what financial literacy is. Yeah. You know, if they decide to take up the media space one hour on all, on all major media platforms, don't you think, Cheryl, that a lot of people will actually know uh, what financial literacy is? Thank if you. people can't actually um, take the, ca can't actually have the volition themselves to take the app, to pick up their phones or open up their laptops and actually learn about what actual financial literacy is, then mm. shove it down their throats, right? Let me, let me, I like that perspective, but let me, let me ask this. Don't you think it's because of the lack of finances that makes you aware of your expenditure? Because most, most people who are wealthy, when you ask them how much money do they have, they have to go to their records and see, because they're not even sure the exact number. But saying, how na do? 
Ndo utenda kwa mpesa useme <laughs> nilitumia mtu ata excess ya 20 bob on this day and on this time. Because you, you don't have the stability for you not to look at your finances. Thanks. You have to check your finances because but iyo pesa unaitaji, iyo 10 bob you need it, otherwise haukuli sapa. But if you didn't need that 10 bob, would you be aware of how you've spent that money? So let me let me come back, let me circle back to that. But let me uh, sample some of the comments you guys have shared. Swali ni muliza on our platforms is why do you think it's harder for the millennials and the Gen Z to make it in life? Do you think it's hard at all? Do you think some of the things that are happening around us have influenced that one way or another? Let me read uh, some of the comments you've shared. This is from Facebook. We have Eriko Sami who says, uh, why? Question mark, atamini kona swali, why? Why do you think it's hard? <laughs> JJ Ozengo amesema, Mariakani mkilo massive present, Asanti. Sultan Nyabuga is, I don't think it is hard. Thank you for that. But why don't you think it's hard? Because that's the question that I want to, to, to figure out. I was looking at, I've been looking at interviews with uh, some wealthy people. Wengine wanaulizwa, how much do you have in your bank account today? And they'll give you a rough estimate. Because they don't know what's coming in, what's coming out. Then if you ask someone who doesn't have that much financial freedom, they will tell you down to the sense. <laughs> what I call me down to the sense. Ndo in case mtu akate yo pesa, na haja approve, atafuatilia. Aseme five bob yangu imenda pahali. So there's an aspect of being more aware when you don't have that much fluidity versus just being aware because you want to keep track of your expenditure. You want to keep track of what's coming in, what's going out. But we were talking about the political scene. There's so much political unrest. And because of the political unrest, pesa hai zunguki, venye ilikuwa ina zunguka. Because you know when things are going okay, you don't have the worry. There was a time when uh, elections were coming up, I think 2013. Nyayo, ukipita po nyayo, there's kuna po the, the showrooms, the magari. The showrooms were empty days before the elections because there was that perception of kutakuwa na watu wame break in, na nini. Even mandamano, as recently as a few months ago, kuna shops zenye watu walikuwa nafunga. Awezi ingi atao senye kuna mandamano. Wameka po security, sujua me barricade. There's literally a shop that still isn't open because it was broken into. Everything was stolen and I think that guy just chokad. Akasema, eh, 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 iyo loss ni mob sana. So, uh, Ken, when we look at the aspect of the, the political scene, why has it affected us so much more than what when you only experience colonization and post-colonization when the government still wasn't stable, they were more comfortable, or even just globally, versus currently, because we have some sort of stability, but still people are not as successful as they were in the 80s, 70s even. So why is there that difference? Definitely when there's uh, instability in our political uh, situation, it becomes uh, people feel there's the worry of uh, uh, investing or putting their money in a, in a particular investment. You see, if the government, uh, as much as there may be, the government uh, may not be stable to bring uh, or encourage investors to invest in our economy, it becomes hard for you to put your money and after a few years or a few months, you are not able to get return on that particular investment. Uh, example, Safari shares, early 2000, how much were they being sold? When, the, when we had uh, the government, we had a new regime and everything is moving, everything kila mahali unana kuna biashara zinafanyika, these little bribes, you see. Mm. So, you find even you you you, you say uh, you feel that I'm putting my money safely because there's that you are you feel secured. Yeah. But when the government is not stable, and you have even seen when in a, when it's approaching election, you see 
uh, shares of uh, these big large corporates drops. Why? Because you don't know how much. Some even sell there because of that fear yeah. that uh, after election things may not go the way uh, people think. So uh, I don't think uh, just how uh, Ian has explained, government creating awareness and uh, creating awareness and uh, empowering people, whether it is during election or even after election, that when you invest, feel safe, everything will be will be okay in terms of your investment. Akuna kitita ribiwa, akuna there will be no violence. So you see, as much as. Uh, it may not be the reality, but we need, we need, I don't know even how to explain it, but if, if we can, uh, if the government or the, us ourselves come up and say enough is enough, we don't need to fight after election or uh, before election because of one, two. The problem is that in Afanyika, Tunasao ya Kwamba, Kesho Bado, we still need each other. Mm -hmm. So it is the responsibility uh, of the government to make its citizen feel secure in all yeah. sector, whether it is health. Like right now, if you go to hospital, but they have not even put proper structures under SHA. Yeah. So, uh, because these people look for their own interest, I think that's why we, we, we lose it all. Yeah, they so it's the leadership. The leadership. They put, uh, but I don't blame them and I don't blame us because at one point I'm sure even the America, uh, the American were in that state. And everywhere, if they were in that state. Even right now, Americans have the elections coming up. Bado kuna mushki. And it's unfortunate because we've, we've <laughs> I think since COVID, so many things have happened. There is the war in Ukraine and Russia. There is the war of Israel and Palestine that is causing some instability in most governments. We have been seeing most nations experiencing that. Yeah. But another thing that you said earlier that I want us to bring up before our, our, our time is up is about us wanting quick success, us wanting instant gratification. Ni may invest leo, mimi nataka returns zangu kesho na zikuwe na millions. Kama si hivyo si invest. You know, there's that, because we have been, partly I'm going to, to blame it on technology and social media because we have been shown this thing of overnight success. Mtu alilala ameamka, leo ameomoka, leo ni celeb, leo amefanya hivi. And also there was something I came across. The movies we consumed when I, part, let me speak for myself, the movies I watched when I was a kid, people were becoming successful. If you, kimakosa tu, unajua, ati unafanana na celeb flani, unekwapo, then you become successful. So it kind of taught us of uh, instant gratification, not working hard for the things that people have. Most things that were generated in the, in the media space, in the movie space, particularly in the early 2000s to the 2010s and all that, it was almost like fantasies. It was very, what I'm saying, delusional. <laughs> yeah, it was like scenario, it was like a fairy tale. You're supposed to just make it. You're not supposed to go through all this struggle. Only a few movies or only a few things that were coming out, only a few people will tell you about what went in behind the scenes. Most people will tell you, ni God. Minimum or more, to me, it's a juicy formula. If you follow the history of Singapore, mm. when uh, they were when they were moving from, they were fighting to have their uh, their independence or their own country. Initially, they were under Malaysian, I, I think so. Yeah. The, the larger Malaysian. So when they were moving, it's it's uh, there are three the Chinese, the Malaysian, and the Indians. Mm. How the president, the former president, the, the, the father, the foundation, if you, if, if you just follow the story, how the, they came into the country of Singapore, you will find that the struggle, the struggle, and how he gives the story, you will find that the Gen Zs or the millennials, they are not ready to, to give, struggle. to give out mm. the effort. It is effortless. You have to, you have to 
put in some work. So, some work. Said, Taki, oh, put so in when you what Taki? What you Taka? We have this concept of fake it till you make it. Does it actually apply? I feel like uh, the, the question in point uh, is basically all about culture. Because mm. let me give you a prime example. Someone who's my age right now in Europe might be a millionaire than while well, I'm still like maybe in school, maybe with all, yeah, yeah. still stru struggling might I add. Yeah. Uh, case in point, um, footballers, right? There's this youngster from Spain. He plays for Barcelona, Lamine Yamal. Mm. The kid is 16 years old and is already a millionaire. Yeah. 16 years old. From what? Playing football. We consume it. It's not bad. It's not bad that we consume it. Is that it, the only problem is that we as a country, okay, not we as a country, we as a generation think that we as a country are at that point, mm -hmm. are at that point, but we are not at that point. We are still at Somo Kwa Bidi. A 16-year-old a old in Kenya is in Form 2. Yeah. What is he being told? Shika chemistry. Mm. In periodic table, wewe. The same 16-year-old in Spain is a millionaire right now. The same... 20 year old in Europe is a millionaire. The same 20 year old in the United States is a singer. Is a singer and is a millionaire. From yeah. where? America's got, cut, got talent. From where? That one single movie and everything explodes. I feel like there's that diversification of income. What we have in Kenya is, the, is income generated from corporates, generated from business. That takes time. And we think we are at the same level as Europe but, or the Americas, but we are not. Mm. That's it's the only problem. Time. From there, we are looking at why, why, why are we not there? Poor policies from politicians, poor policies from leaderships, uh, corruption. Corruption. Yeah. If you want to be a footballer, there are very good footballers in the country, very, very good footballers. I've played with some. 16-year-olds 16 year are very good in football. What's the biggest stadium that we have in the country? Nyayu Stadium. That's the biggest stadium. And when we are going to Europe, not even in Europe, when we are going to South Africa, Nyayu Stadium does not even fit to be a training, training camp, right? Yeah. I feel like <coughs> all these factors that we've actually been talking about are intertwined mm. from culture, from political regulations, from financial liter literacy. All this is intertwined. So it trickles down to the leadership and the governance of a nation. Yeah. It's not about... Policies. Cause, yeah, it's policies. about the public policies. Because uh, there's the things that could affect it, but it trickles down to how is the governance? What are the policies in place that make it possible for you to become successful? Mm -hmm. Let me sample some of the comments you <coughs> shared uh, from Facebook. Swalini, do you think it's harder for millennials and Gen Z to make it? And we have uh, Sultan Nyabuga who says, I don't think it's hard. If one uses the small he or she has, like me, I started from scratch, but today I have made a great achievement. Then, send greetings to my mom, Tabi, and dad, Shem Nyabuga. Asanti sana, Sultan. Nice, we want to know what did you do and what are you doing so that we can get some insight. Mark Poldoski says, always tuned in from Chuka. Cheryl Sasa, kila mse aneza make it kwa life ukijipanga vizuri, kujituma vile inafa na kutumia kitu ukonayo vizuri. I like that uh, Mark and Sultana, they agree. It's about kujituma and using what you have to make more. And that's what, if we look at the success stories of most people, they started from nothing and they used what they had at their disposal, their resources, the, the influence, the networks they had to make it to where they needed to be. But you have to start from somewhere. So because time is uh, not on our side, unfortunately, because I think this conversation can go on and on and on, let me get some parting shots. Ken, what advice would you give uh, to someone who's trying and trying to make it? From an accountant's point of view, what are some of the things that we can implement in our life to make it uh, easier for us to be successful. You could tell us maybe in under a minute. I hope Sijaku Katia time up. All. No, no. One, uh, it's always good to share, share information and be ready to learn, be ready to absorb uh, uh, with your people around you. So it's good that uh, Currently, we uh, the Gen Zs, uh, 
whatever mistakes they, they are going, uh, they have made and they are going through, they are able to learn, share, be, be ready to learn and be ready to uh, listen. Yeah. yeah, I like that because that's something that we don't always do. We have to be willing to learn and even apply what we are learning. Ian, what's your parting shot to someone who's trying to make it right now? Um, Reevaluate, go back, redesign, uh, and reclaim. Because mm. if plan A is not working, there's definitely plan B. If plan B doesn't work, there's definitely plan C. Yeah. On and on and on, up to plan Z. I think those are 26 plans. All of them can't fail. It's yeah. a matter of probability. All of and them won't fail. <laughs> Fast. Yeah, true, true, true. I like that. Uh, just to, to wind up, I think maybe we can even wind up there. That's a wonderful point to end it at because you have to utilize what you have, learn and grow based on what you have. If it doesn't work, there are so many different things that you can do to make it. And the best thing is millennials and Gen Z are still very young. We still have a lot of time and it's just about utilizing what you have and the time that you have at your disposal currently. That is it for us today. My personal opinion, I don't think it's that hard to be successful. I think it's challenging, yes, but it's very possible because people have done it. And if they've done it, why can't you? Why can't we? It's very possible for us to do it. It's just the journey is different for each and every one of us. Be intentional and keep pushing because our timelines are different but ultimately success is something that is achievable it's something that we can all attain that's it for us for today we are going to have more interesting conversations so come back again next week because we are live every single thursday between 7 and 8 p.m we'll have a repeat of this tomorrow between 1 and 2 p.m as well if you missed it or if you want to let someone know, they can listen into the conversation then. I'd like to thank you guys for staying tuned throughout the program. Thank you, Ken, and thank you, Ian, for joining me today. And for the entire team, it has been a success because of the people who are behind the scenes. Thank you, have a lovely evening, and I'll see you guys next week.